I think we ended on this study before where we can see the increased signal intensity within the TSC and the gradient echo, thin cut gradient echo showing the tear. So, uh, uh, Robert, what do you think of this case? Uh, hold on just a second here. Uh, so here it does look like there's a little bit of fluid in the uh, DRUJ. I don't see a definite tear. Okay. Now, this is an arthrogram. <laughs> Here's what the uh, T1 weighted image looked like. Gotcha. So there, it doesn't look like there's contrast there, so I don't think there's a tear. Yeah. So there's one thing to remember that with good technique, and this is compared to the the kind of technique we did back in the 1980s, which probably doesn't count anymore. You guys will probably never see that. Uh, with uh, you know modern MR imaging, uh, it's not uncommon to have small effusions within the distal radial ulnar joint, uh, which are not necessarily pathologic. Okay, and then here's just an arthrogram uh, where contrast is extending into the proximal uh, or the distal uh, uh, radial ulnar joint space, uh, consistent with a communicating tear. Okay, uh, Tayson, uh, an old-fashioned arthrogram. All right, so it looks like we uh, injected at the radiocarpal joint space, and I do see some contrast extending into the DRUJ there. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the arthrogram. Here's what the MR looks like. <clears throat> so, full thickness tear near the radial attachment. Okay. J John, are you trying to say something? Oh, no. I'm getting sound. What, John? Okay, so this is in the coronal plane. And if we go to the sagittal plane, we can see the tear also in the sagittal plane. It's not working. John, can you hear us? You're not on mute, right? Let me let's stop for a second. I have a new video. No, they're not showing anything yet. They're not showing anything yet. Can you ask them if you, you want to get Chen Chen? He's calling. Get Chen Chen. He's sleeping. Call from. Hello. Hi, uh, John. We can hear you. Can you not hear us? I cannot hear you. There's sound already. Uh, well, I th I think uh, uh, the the well the fellows. Can I can't hear you now, but I'm not getting a picture. Okay. All right. Then let me start the picture back again. Now I've got the picture. Okay. Well, I think we're okay now. Okay, good. You can hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I guess we're back on now. <clears throat> uh, okay, so here we can see a positive uh, arthrogram <clears throat> and the MR scan showing the contrast extending through a central perforation 
uh, with a, a kind of a complex uh, tear here. Sagittal images, we can also see it's really occurring in, in the uh, volar aspect of the the uh, triangle fiber cartilage, and this was a class A or a central perforation. Okay. Right, so here I see um, increased signal in that central, uh, yeah, central disc there, the TFCC. So the, this was another class A central perforation. And here's one on uh, one of the early 3T images uh, from Larry and uh, showing a little central perforation. Okay. Uh, Robert? <coughs> Uh, here, it looks like there may be another central perforation of the articular disc of the TFCC there. Yeah, with a little fluid going into the joint space, good. All right. So that's on a 3 Tesla. This is on a 0 0.2 Tesla. And here we can see uh, dorsally, the TFC looks intact. Centrally, uh, there's a defect. And ventrally, it looks intact. And this was also a uh, perforation, central perforation. Okay, Tayson. All right, so image on the right, I see a, looks like a full thickness defect there centrally. And then we yeah. see some uh, fluid in the DRUJ. So there, dorsally, we see it's intact, and there was a little central perforation. And on the sagittal images, uh, we can we can uh, see the dorsal and volar aspects. Again, another uh, central perforation. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here again, looks like a tear or central perforation. That central disc. This is really going over more toward the actual insertion of the TSC on the articular cartilage of the radius. And you can see again, it's, this is a very volar, like that previous one of the previous ones you saw, dorsal band, atrium band, and this was a volar band mm -hmm. uh, tear going to the volar. No, this, uh, this is an older person, isn't it? Probably. Probably. Okay, Robert. Robert, are you still with us? Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, here on the three millimeter T ones, it looks like there may be another central perforation, but uh, yeah, the DRUJ effusion. Um, it must be an arthrogram because we see bright fluid here. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like it's going through. It could be a defect there, really at the radial insertion of the TFC. And uh, if we go to the thinner cuts, this is on a low field scanner we can actually see the details of the perforation a little bit better. So this is really an insertional tear of the TFC on the radius. And the reason I brought up the age is because um, when our arthroscopy is done, um, when you're over 40 or so, they um, debride the area instead of trying to suture things together yeah. because they're de degenerated. Thanks, John. Okay, Tayson. All right, 48 year old male, ulnar sided pain, and felt a pop golfing. All right. Well, looks like there's a flap. Looks like a central perforation as well. Mm -hmm. And there we can see it on other images and some displacement of the of the, the TSC. And here we can see a much larger defect in the body where that central part of the body has flipped over into that flap, which we can see there. Flap in the flap. Now this can be repaired arthroscopically or open. Okay. Uh, depends on your training. So um a 48 year old uh, person i imagine 
uh, I would do arth arthroscopic debridement, and that's about it. Okay. And okay. let him go back to playing golf. Great. Thanks. Okay, Senor. Mm. So here it looks like the styloid attachment, the lower laminar attachment looks like it's torn. Okay. And if you go to the other side, we can see that it looks like it's much more robust attachment uh, on the other side. Yeah. Um, so that's a lower laminar tear. Okay. Uh, Robert. All right. Uh, here again, we have a, looks like an arthrogram on the left and then it looks like there's some increased signal in that upper and lower lamina of the TFCC. So I'd be concerned about a tear there. Good. Well, what would you do with this case? It's a good question. I mean, I'd refer to orthopedic surgery, hand surgery. So. Well, I would send him straight to a hand surgeon because most orthopedic surgeons wouldn't touch it. Mm -hmm. um, as you notice, the ulna is short mm -hmm. and it's impinging, and this is in the hands of a surgeon. I mean, a hand surgeon. Um, I don't think this can be fixed arthroscopically. Maybe part of it can be, but you have to change the length of the ulna. And uh, so that this, this is a pretty tricky surgery here. There are many, many different procedures. I, I, I can't explain all of them. I, in fact, I don't know all of them. Uh, there are uh, books written about them. So, Thanks, John. Great. Yeah, that would be a class B. All right, uh, Tayson. All right. Uh, there's some low signal changes on our styloid, and the TSEC is increased in signal. Okay. There's another cut in there. And then here, if we go to the uh, to the stir images, these are old images. We can see still a peripheral tear here. Yeah. This is another peripheral tear or a Palmer class B uh, injury. And if we go to low field here, looks like the what is it? Attachment is oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, the styloid attachment, lower laminar attachment looks torn. Yeah. So these low field images are not great, but uh, uh, if you have good technique and good positioning, uh, you can actually uh, make diagnoses on them. Well, you, you do have pathology, so the diagnosis is made arthroscopically. Good. Thanks, John. Okay. Um, let's see, Robert. All right. So we have a 30 year old professional tennis player, owner, wrist pain for several months in progressive worsening, moderate distal radial owner instability. And here it looks like there's you know, a tear of the, well, there's increased or contrast at the, I guess, the fulvial attachment there. Yeah. Here they did a double compartment injection. So they, injected both the mid role and the uh, distal radial ulnar joint space uh, to show you here. And so here you have basically an upper lamina tear where mm -hmm. the lower lamina is still intact. But that foveal attachment is uh, pretty important for uh, fine stability of the distal radial ulnar joint. Uh, so in young athletes, these can be symptomatic. And uh, there you can see the, uh, the tear. And it's just a diagram of the uh, of the of the upper lamina tear going to the foveal attachment. Uh, and, and and tennis, like on the backhand, you use two hands most most of the time. It's very unusual for a professional to use one hand. That's kind of rare. 
and uh, the wrist doesn't break, and 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 when the ball is hit, uh, otherwise you'd, you'd have problems all over the place with the wrist and hand. So um, the, the, the tennis racket is held held firm, and to get a that kind of an injury, something broke down in the patient's grip, and uh, that's how this happens. I think the career here may may be over. Okay. And again, I, I couldn't say that. Uh, depends on how, how the surgery went. Right. Okay. And so this is really a f f foveal dissociation or an upper laminar tear, leading yeah. to instability. Good. Okay, Tayson. All right, looks like we might have a foveal attachment tear, and I don't know if there's a some post-traumatic irregularity of the ulnar styloid as well. Yeah, so it's probably a fracture of the ulnar styloid and a tear of the foveal attachment. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The As you can see that the uh, uh, lower lamina is attached to the unstable bone fragment, and the upper lamina is torn here. Is the DRUI okay, John, or, or do you think it's a little separator? Uh, I think there's a little tear here. Oh, the, the here. I uh, well, there's there's much too much fluid in it, and with these tears, it's got to be unstable. So I'm sure it's mm -hmm. unstable. And here are another low field scanners showing a, a lower laminar tear. The foveal attachment looks like it's still grossly intact here. Mm. Uh, here it looks like there's some cystic change within the peripheral TFCC on the T1. Yeah, looks like a vertical defect there. Tear that lower lamina and foveal attachment. Yeah, and at surgery, this was a, a extensive tear of the <coughs> peripheral attachments with uh, cyst formation, so it's chronic. Okay, Robert, again, low field scanner. <laughs> uh, here it looks like there's a chronic tear of the ulnar styloid process. Uh, maybe a, a fracture here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this patient also had a foveal tear. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> unstable. Uh, Taysen. All right, so definitely looks like the uh, foveal attachment is torn. There's some negative ulnar variance as well. Right. And then on the axial, if you remember, we talked about instability, and uh, this is this is too much. So th there are debates about how much is is too much, but uh, when. Uh, uh, more more than half of the articular surface of the ulna is uh, dorsal to the uh, radius, then uh, uh, and you really don't have a good articulation between the radius and ulna. This this is unstable. Okay. Uh, clinically, you can pick that up. Yeah. And then here we can see an oblique tear of the periphery of the triangular fibro cartilage. This patient was not imaged in the proper position, and therefore we don't see the ulnar styloid here. So you always have to be very concerned about uh, about uh, evaluating these when when they're not positioned properly. In my experience, uh, but we called a tear. The paper, patient when they they went our arthroscopically, and, and there's the tear, there's the probe going into the tear, and they uh, sutured it uh, in place there. 
It looks pretty frayed. I wonder how well that would hold. Uh, I don't know. I never, I'm not, I never got I'm not an of expert. In, I'm not an expert in this, so I. Yeah. But this is pretty. Look, looks pretty frayed, frayed to me. Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, I think it's me. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, looking at the uh, peripheral TFCC, uh, yeah, just doesn't look like, it looks frayed. Yeah, it's very frayed here, but notice we don't see the ulnar styloid. Right. So you have to right. be very concerned because it probably means that it was imaged in supination, not pronation. Mm -hmm. So you can get a lot of partial voluming artifacts here uh, in this situation. This is actually from a different location. Uh, uh, and here we can see maybe fluid going through the uh, the lunotriquetral uh, area, and what we're seeing here this uh, this is this actually turned out to be a lunotriquetral ligament tear, uh, which would uh, which made this a class C at the time of surgery. And the patient also had a. Uh, 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 Unotriquetral ligament tear as well in this patient. Okay. Uh, Robert. All right, so we have chronic wrist pain with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, you're looking at the lunate. There's a lot of sclerotic change proximally and some edema there. And uh, there's some widening of that lunotriquetral interval again. So I'd be concerned for. Ligament tear there. Yeah. And again, don't really we, don't, we don't see the ulnar styloid well here. Mm -hmm. So again, I'd be worried about the uh, positioning of the patient. And here's what the sagittal image showed. Yeah, so it looks like there's some tilt of the lunate. Uh, so. Yeah. So in this particular case, this was a lunotriquetral ligament tear with VC instability of the wrist with foreshortening, some degenerative change. Uh, the triangular fiber cartilage was actually intact. But again, always be uh, concerned if you don't see the ulnar styloid and the attachment there because of the positioning of the patient. Tayson. All right. Is this an orthogram? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, well, I don't see any fluid going into the uh, TFCC. Lunotriquetral ligament looks intact. At this age, you certainly wouldn't expect that, would you? All right. Uh... Okay. So, so what we're we're having here. Uh, is that we're not really seeing the the ulnar styloid very well. That's because we're we're not in the mid plane in this particular case. But yeah. we, really, we really should see the uh, uh, homunculus out through here. And what we're seeing is just a lot of contrast filling a, a void space there. And uh, this is the whole area here where you really should have the ulnar quadriceps ligament. So this is someone who ended up having an intact disc of the triangular fiber cartilage, but the triangular fiber cartilage was unstable because the tear was between the the, the disc and the uh, uh, and the uh, triquetral. Okay. And then here is a radial attachment tear, which makes it a Palmer class D. Okay. Okay, so in the mid image on the left, we see positive ulnar variants. Don't see a good attachment to the radius of the TFCC. So maybe yeah. here, if I go posteriorly, we can actually see it. But in the mid plane and anteriorly, uh, there was just a large tear there. So, okay. Robert? All right, so here we're going to have another arthrogram, and it does look like there's some 
contrasting the DRUJ. Yeah, yeah. extending down in right uh, through a tear in the uh, in in the disc, and then on the sagittal image, we can see that the the tear is predominantly uh, dorsally here. Jason. <laughs> All right. Looks like we have a lot of edema within the lunate and the ulnar side of the radius as well as the ulna there. Um, as, yeah, this is very attenuated uh, radial attachment of the TFCC. So what would you call this? Um, High grade tearing. Yeah, so this is a big tear. It's also chronic. Uh, this patient's been unstable for a long time, which has produced severe degenerative disease here. So there's uh, not a whole lot of options uh, when it's this degenerative. Check under the egg. Yeah. Okay, 35 year old. Ulnar wrist pain after a bike accident. Um, hmm. I'm not. I'm not quite sure what's coming across the distal ulna there. Um. Hmm. Is this some kind? Of, is this a post-surgical uh, appearance? There's maybe yeah. the tendons going through a tunnel. The ECU is going through a tunnel. Yeah. 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 So this is post-surgical, and this is called a Nakamura procedure. It's a graft graft procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to try to stabilize the the. Uh, uh, just a radial ulnar joint and a little bit TFCC. Good. Okay, so let's move on now and let's talk about the first carpal metacarpal joint, which is one of the most commonly degenerated joints in the body because of a lot of use of the of the thumb and a lot of force go through the the first the, the radial aspect of the wrist and, and hand. And I can assure you, it's no fun to have. <laughs> okay. Really. And as you can see here, it's the most common site for upper extremity surgery for DJD. And uh, it's a common place to be unstable from degenerative disease where you just get uh, tearing, chronic tearing of the, the capsular structures that we're going to talk about. Uh, but it's also a common location where you get fractures, which we'll talk about the Bennett and Merlando uh, Rolando fractures. So here's kind of a, a diagram posteriorly. Uh, we have the posterior oblique ligament and uh, 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 I'm blocking here for a second. Uh, these are the capsular ligament. This is the intermetatarsal ligament here. And this, and then, uh, and then we have the tendon insertion to the to the base of the first metatarsal as well. Uh, on the volar side, we have the flexor retinaculum here anteriorly, and then we have the uh, uh, the ulnar collateral ligament capsule and the uh, uh, anterior oblique ligaments, uh, which occur anteriorly here. So basically, these ligaments are just again, like we've seen elsewhere, thickenings of the capsule. <laughs> and uh, uh, most of the time what we see, we can see actual tearing of them and acute injuries. We can see fracture dislocations and acute injuries. Or we can see insufficiency of the capsule in these locations due to chronic degenerative changes. And uh, this is just the, kind of the location of the digital ligaments. Again, these are all part of the capsule. Uh, so if you uh, 
Uh, here we, we can see, but basically in the sagittal plane, the trapezium, the first metacarpal, here is the anterior oblique ligament, the posterior oblique ligaments, which are the, uh, the anterior and posterior capsule. Uh, and then uh, here we can see the intermetatarsal ligament across here and uh, the capsule uh, here. And this is the adductor pollicis longus tendon coming across here. So, uh, Robert, what do you think of this case? All right, so we have a 60-year-old male with acute injury to the thumb base. Uh, we just see some degenerative changes of that first CMC, and there's a lot of surrounding soft tissue edema. Right. And then if you remember what the capsule looks like mm -hmm. in a few of those other cases, it should be a nice, nice black line, mm -hmm. uniform thickness with sharp margin. And we can see this capsule is very abnormal. Both the anterior oblique and the posterior oblique ligaments are very degenerated and, and irregular. And this is typical of chronic degenerative disease. In this case, we don't yet see a lot of bony changes, uh, but this is typical of uh, instability uh, due to the degeneration of the capsule. And in this particular case, we can also see some edema in the adjacent uh, uh, muscles. And uh, this was due to chronic uh, recurrent injuries to the base of the thumb leading to the degeneration of the capsule, and in this particular case, also a uh, acute muscle strain of the, of the muscles. Okay. I imagine you see a lot of these, John. Uh, we see a lot of the degenerative changes. I don't see that many acute changes, acute mm -hmm. fractures, but we see a lot of chronic degenerative disease. The folks are too old to do acute changes. Yeah, right. Okay. Tayson. All right. Looks like we have some mild subluxation at that first CMC joint, and maybe a little bit of bony irregularity. Yeah. Yeah, near that uh, anterior oblique. Sharp point there, right in there. If we go to the MR examination, what do you see here? Yeah, it looks like a fracture at the base of the right first metacarpal. Yeah, was it a little avulsed bone fragment? from the capsular insertion there. That's what you see on the CT. And this is called a Bennett's fracture. Okay. 22-year-old hit radial aspect of the thumb playing rugby. Um, yeah, looking at that anterior oblique ligament, it looks, looks irregular there. Uh, Partially torn. Also posterior oblique, the proximal portion that looks torn. Right. On the axial views, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Is that the abductor pollicis tendon? Yeah, Maybe I think that's right. And I think you got a little bone injury here as well. Okay. Uh, but this is predominantly a kind of radial collateral ligament tear. Over here. Mm. From a probable dislocation. Okay, Robert. All right, All right, so we have pain at the uh, first metacarpal base after trauma. And here looks there's a lot of edema surrounding that first CMC and there it looks like there's a tear of the anterior oblique ligament. Okay, there's a tear of the anterior ligament. That posterior ligament doesn't look great either. Yeah, you can see it here, and uh, yeah, so that this was a severe injury to the posterior, but a complete tear of the anterior oblique ligament, and probably someone who had a uh, an acute uh, dislocation. Okay, uh, Tayson. All right, looks like a lot of. Edema surrounding that first CMC. Uh, I don't see the anterior oblique ligament distal attachment well, and there's a lot of increased signal in that posterior oblique as well. Right. 
then a lot of edema in the surrounding soft tissues, including along the adductor tendons there. And, yeah. And then there you can see the markers uh, on either side of the first one, a carpal, carpal articulation, a lot of other edema. And this was a dislocation with a pretty much complete capsular tear. Okay. Okay, so 18-year-old, one month after trauma, pain and grinding. Um, image on the right, we see edema in the uh, first metacarpal and, uh, and uh, in the trapezium. And just a lot of, yeah, irregularity of the distal scaphoid and just this soft tissue thickening, maybe scar tissue and that, where that... Yeah. Uh, Oblique lig or anterior oblique ligament, I guess. This is a gradient echo. Maybe there's a little bone fragment off here. I would check the plane films carefully. Mm. Certainly, that looks like uh, some erosive changes of the base there. A lot of soft tissue thickening here. Yeah. And yeah, bone fragment off that uh, radial yeah. aspect of the. So uh, there's the, the bone fragment there, and you can see it nicely on the plane. Film. Yeah. <laughs> This fellow needs surgery. Yeah. Robert. All right. So we have a history of chronic lateral wrist pain. And looking at that base of the first metacarpal, there's a lot of cystic change in surrounding soft tissue edema, a lot of degenerative signal in the uh, adjacent capsule and ligaments. Yeah. Mm. Right. You know, similarly here as a you know, joint diffusion, cystic change and right. Is that post op or is are those cysts? Uh, I think those are cysts. Yeah, I think those are on this last image. Yeah. I think this patient just had chronic instability from uh repetitive overuse for of years of uh his uh, his occupation. So, uh, as we just said, this is a very common joint for uh, degenerative changes. Uh, there are a number of classification systems for degenerative disease here. And this is the Eaton st classification stage one. You have normal configuration of mild joint space narrowing on plane films. Stage two is a narrow joint space with osteophytes with a joint space less than two millimeters. Stage three, cyst sclerosis, loose bodies, osteophytes. And uh, you can get subluxation. Uh, less than a third, and then or greater than a third. I'm sorry of the uh, diameter of the of the base, and then stage uh, four, or stage three plus you've got uh, degenerative change of the scaphotrapezio trapezoidal joint. Or more visually, uh, this would be early stage one looks pretty almost normal. Stage two, you get a little bit of degenerative changes and irregularity of the bone here. Three is much more pan degenerative changes involving the entire joint space here. And then stage four, it really involves the triscaphy and the, the remainder of the bones here, is including the base of the second. And then uh, there is a, a kind of a complicated scapho trapezial trapezoidal joint. Uh, and they have different ligaments that, that stabilize the joint. I, I rarely call out these ligaments uh, specifically in, in uh, imaging uh, the joint, but uh, uh, you know, if there are focal locations where the surgeon's concerned about specific uh, parts of the capsule and uh, the ligaments here, uh, I would look these up and uh, compare it to the images. Okay, uh, Tayson? All right. We have a star and arrows over the flexor carpi radialis. Okay. Tennis and advice there. Looks like they injected some contrast here, right? Yeah. And then here's the the joint space. So I think this was an arthrogram injection. Let's 
So uh, I've, I've actually never done an injection of this joint, nor do I think I've ever actually imaged an injection of this joint uh, myself. And then again, you can you can see a lot of the the different ligaments in this particular area. Usually, uh, what we're interested in is either traumatic injuries and fractures, or the degree of degenerative disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of instabilities. Why don't we stop here today, and we'll move on to another topic in the wrists uh, on uh, Thursday. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you a question, John? Sure. Um, do you know anything about a procedure, uh, Lomeca? No, I don't know about it. It's an intense pulse light designated to treat pig pigmented and vascular lesions. Basically, I'm talking about a I have a dry eye, and they're recommending it. Uh, I guess what they do is they they fry the. Uh, just, just a second, John. Let, let me uh, let me stop our dictation here. Actually, John, let me call you. Yeah. Okay.